good afternoon everyone uh, this is actually a great spot or a, from a time perspective i was a little scared that i have to go right after lunch and you know it's always difficult to hold the attention of the audience you know right after lunch but it was a fantastic insightful you know conversation that we just had and uh, i think hope you're all awake you know for this session uh, i only have about 12 minutes or so i'm going to really go through this pretty fast but you know i'm going to be around we have a booth outside salesforce so please come and talk to us we would love to chat with you and understand what you guys are doing with you know data and ai uh, before i actually get into the presentation i want to of course you know thank you again uh, you all been a great audience i was in a panel early this morning and it's nice to be back here and before i get into the presentation i'm going to read out a quote uh, from one of my favorite marketers uh, he's a pretty famous guy called seth uh, gordon you can google him you know he's written a lot of fantastic books but especially his views on uh, marketing are you know so simple that you know you'll think why didn't i think of this right uh, and that's what something you know i really like about him uh, and the quote is persistent consistent and frequent stories delivered to an aligned audience will earn attention trust and action so it's a pretty simple uh, you know just just kind of hold on to that while i go through the presentation and i'll come back and revisit the score to tell you why this is so important um so so what do you what do you see here you know this is obviously pictures of a, a retail store you know kind of an environment right um so there are a couple of things going on you know on one side of the um story you can see you know human interaction happening right there is an associate there is a shopper there is a customer you know there's a lot of interaction going on somebody asking questions somebody assisting um maybe you know somebody has a problem and that's being solved in real time but you know these exact interactions i would argue from a technology perspective is a great opportunity for you to actually collect some fantastic insights from those interactions right Uh, on the digital world of course you know this would be a lot more easier because you know when i'm browsing i click on a product i go to some page i go back you know all of that stuff is something that i can track very easily using technology but these kinds of things happen in a store too right so the question is you know how do we capture these you know interactions and you know on the digital world i i kind of you know call them as digital bread crumbs you kind of you know leave these you know bread crumbs as you go along and then i can figure out where those breadcrumbs are i can collect them and i can actually you know make some sense out of it i can you know do something with it at a later point in time but the question is how do we do that in a physical environment given that you know we all still largely live in a physical environment right yes a lot of things have moved online uh, perhaps you know when you're looking for a product the initial research or you know shortlisting products or comparing something looking at a price reading reviews yes a lot of those activities have definitely moved online onto digital platforms but you know a lot of the customers that i talk to you know they still say that the culmination of all of those journeys so to speak is very much in the physical world and i think you know india as a as a society as a culture i don't think that will ever go away you know um, and therefore i think it's important to understand how can we do better in the physical environment and uh, you know like i said a lot of things have already moved online but still the physical world exists and that's what we all live in but i think the opportunity there for us is that these were you know worlds are colliding right the physical and the digital and i'm you know i hate this word but i'm going to use it anyway digital right i'm sure all of you have heard it you know the so called colliding of the physical and the digital worlds but but it is true in some sense right um i'm i i use my mobile i book a cab you know all of that is online but at the end of the day I, the cab still has to come to my doorstep physically i have to open the door i have to get in i have to give him the otp and and then you know i go to some destination and so on and so forth so the point here is that there are a lot of opportunities for you to you know get those bread crumbs you know so to speak right and bread crumbs are nothing but you know essentially you know things that the customer is doing you know it's customer behavior you know information right it's it's information because it's not insight yet you know and that's the reason i'm emphasizing on information but hopefully over a period of time when that information is all put together in a nice manner hopefully will lead you to something and like 
Seth uh, Gordon said, hopefully it will be consistent and you will be able to communicate with your customer, you know, very frequently, but you're also going to be doing it to an aligned audience, right? And the word alignment is very important here because, you know, one thing that businesses need to be clear is that your product or service may not work for everybody in the world, right? So you have to very quickly figure out, like uh, Mr. Chala was saying, you know, I'm sure he's figured out who are his target customers for that bus service that he was talking about, right? And you got to narrow down that very, very quickly. Otherwise, you know, you'll just spread yourself too thin trying to be all things to all people and that simply is just a recipe for disaster. So, you know, and, and the value of data, I don't think I need to stand in front of you to really argue the value of data, right? I think today every company, you know, data is the lifeline and the lifeblood. Every company is a technology company at the end of the day. I mean, you heard them, right? The bus service ultimately is really nothing but a very tech-driven kind of a thing. There are sensors, you know, you learn a lot of that. You're able to book seats from a consumer's perspective, but a lot of technology is already infused into even traditional businesses like a bus service. You know, who would have thought that, you know, five, ten years ago? So now the question now is that, uh, I'm going to skip this, you know, mainly in the interest of time, but the point here is that that customer journey that spans all the way from, you know, triggering that need or that, you know, emotional need to buy something or to solve a problem, all the way up to the point where you end up buying the product and then you enjoy and experience the product. There are a lot of things going on and as I said, you know, the, there is a sort of a mishmash of things that's happening both in the physical world as well as the digital world and, and, and that is where the opportunity lies for you in terms of, you know, collecting those, you know, uh, insights. Um, so, so what does it take, right? Um, essentially, there are three pillars to it. Once you're able to collect the information, you're able to engage with that customer a lot better. And that engagement, you know, will improve over a period of time. So it's really a virtuous cycle. The more you learn and collect, you know, the more insight it can feed into your future campaign. And that campaign will give you more insights and so on and so forth, right? So that's really the virtuous cycle that you're, you know, talking about. Your first campaign may not go that well, right? And, and that's okay, you know? It's not that, you know, the very first campaign you're going to get 100% results or a huge success rate or whatever it is. Now, so what we're talking about again, you know, from a Salesforce perspective is to really, you know, figure out a way to get all of this data into a single, you know, platform. Uh, and, and this is what we call as a data cloud. And of course, you know, a lot of competitors also have similar products. So I'm going to just give you a conceptual view of what it does. Um, and the fundamentally what it does is that, you know, any organization for that matter, you're going to end up with a lot of different data sources, right? Uh, you're going to have your point of sale in the stores, you're going to have loyalty programs, you're going to have affiliate marketing data, you have data coming in from social media, and so on and so forth. I mean, literally, any organization today, I think they'll have at least 19 to 20 sources of data, right? So the, the very first job you need to figure out is how do I get all of this into a single place, right? And that's easier said than done, but of course, you know, thanks to technology, there have been a lot of advancements in the last, you know, few years. Um, and again, you know, you know, Salesforce as a company, we've invested billions of dollars in, you know, building this product, you know, from the ground up, right? One is, you know, get all of the data in, and then you create a unified, you know, data model of, of all that information that's there. And we end up creating what is called as a golden record of that customer, right? So this is where, you know, we believe in creating a 360 view of that customer. And once those interactions happen that I was just talking about, Every single interaction, you know, again feeds back into the data cloud and it enriches the profile of who you are as a person, right? In the very first step, all I might know is maybe your name and your phone number or maybe your name and an email. That's all I may have, but that is just the starting point. And like he said, you know, Rome is not built in a day. This is going to take some time, right? But the good news is that even with very little information, you can do quite a bit, right? If it is email, then, you know, then the, the question of, even sending them an SMS doesn't even arise, right? But then when you start looking at the quality of the data and you find that there are a lot of dummy numbers and so on and so forth, you'll very quickly figure out that, hey, you know what, we're just wasting our money in sending SMSs, you know, let's do email or vice versa, right? And then you can measure, you know, click open rates and, you know, conversion rates and so on and so forth and then, you know, get, a, get better at, over a period of time. But then once you have all of the information coming in almost on a real-time basis, you now have set yourself in a very good position to do something with the data. You're able to segment it better, you're able to personalize the information, the campaigns that you're sending, and then again learning from that, as I said, but you can also share this data with lots of 
other people in the organization, right? It doesn't have to be only marketing. And that is the big shift that we are seeing in the technology industry is that these data clouds are emerging as truly, you know, sort of these repositories or reservoirs of data that can serve the entire organization, right? Whether it is your analytics team or customer service or salespeople or marketing for that matter, everybody is seeing their data from their own lens, but guess what? They're all looking at the same set of data, right? So that basically, you know, pretty much leads you to make very consistent, you know, uh, communications or promotions or campaigns, those actions that I was talking about initially, they become a lot more harmonized and a lot more consistent. And from a consumer's perspective, I can start seeing some kind of a picture of a unified corporation emerging or a unified brand because I don't really care, you know, whether I go to the store or whether I bought online. Let's say I ordered something online, if it ends up being the wrong size, you know, I don't want to go back to the post office or call somebody to return it, put it in a package. I would rather go to a store nearby and, and just give it to the customer service just can, you know, get a refund, right? So I, when I don't differentiate you as different channels, you know, there's no reason why the brand or the, you know, the company should look at the so-called multi-channel engagement and so on and so forth, right? The customer is the channel at the end of the day. So that is the real benefit. But then I want to take this one step further by also pointing out the benefits of doing it, right? which is the whole, you know, AI, generative AI phenomenon. You know, we talked about, you know, chat GPT and NVIDIA and all of that. And I think, you know, the promise is real, even though there is a lot of hype and I feel that we are in the very early stages of this, you know, revolution that's about to unfold over the next decade or so. But I think there is a lot of potential. But the thing I want to leave you with today is that, you know, that generative AI and all of those capabilities can only take you as far as the quality of the data that you accumulate, right? So I really want to encourage everybody to kind of, you know, take a step back almost, look at your data readiness, look at all the data sources that are there, you know, clean up that. And, you know, it's like, you know, you go into a room and clean once and then your mom comes back and says, you know what, clean it again. And then you'll find that, you know, all of those dirt that's in the corners, right? You know, these are the things that are going to, you know, trip you up. And once you get past that, then I think you'll start seeing some real business value and benefit because that data is really clean and it, it's, you know, it's, it's good to go from an analysis standpoint. So I'm pretty much, you know, out of time. Um, you know, I won't spend a lot of time on it. But, you know, what we also want to, you know, convey here is that that information that you're storing, of course, is, is, is mission critical. And therefore, when you're using it and, you know, applying it to LLMs and so forth, be very careful about what you're sharing, what you're sending outside of your firewall. And, you know, here again, you know, we think this is an important, uh, you know, point. We want to safeguard the data that you're sending out. You're not uh, training the LLM at your cost. It is not going to fall into the hands of the competitors. But also at the same time, you know, because it's all grounded on your own company's data, uh, it is going to be, you know, the outcomes from those generative AI applications are going to be a lot more, you know, uh, accurate, uh, you know, and the chances of hallucination and bias and toxicity. Some of these things are real issues today that we all read about in the newspapers. Uh, I think, you know, we are going to greatly reduce those risks involved, uh, you know, with the use of enterprise data. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, so the, so the thing is that I think, um, you know, like I said, the physical environment is great. And at the end of the day, even in the panel, somebody was saying, you know, no, nothing ultimately replaces a human-to-human -human interaction. Uh, and I hope that that remains, you know, for, for forever. Uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, digital is going to play an important role. And I think it can augment, you know, that human's interaction by giving you those insights. And I think it's going to be able to give you that insight at scale, right? That's the big difference, you know. I, I can, you know, a mom and pop store or a convenience store can deliver that experience. Uh, because, you know, he lives in that neighborhood, he knows you personally, but when that store, you know, goes up to 1,000 and 10,000 stores, how do you deliver that? I think that is where the real magic of technology lies and uh, I hope uh, this is a, you know, useful perspective and a point of view. So I just want to go back to Seth Godin's quote. So if you want to do something, you know, in a consistent manner, but be very persistent about it and you want to align to an audience and you, you figured out, you know, obviously through this process, what works, who does like me, who doesn't like me, and then you got to really focus on that segment and do it in a, in a manner that tells stories about yourself, and I think that will lead to action. Thank you so much.